Hi, I'm Zach Lovett, and this is a tutorial for Swatcheroo, your little swatch pal. Swatcheroo is a tool that will hold onto and manage your fill and stroke colors. It'll store colors from your layers into the panel. You can apply these colors to your layers, and will even save a little history of your colors for future use. So let's take a look at the interface. This sort of idea should be familiar if you use Photoshop or Illustrator or Animate, you know, most of the other Adobe software. Up here, we have a big swatch resembling the fill color. Down here, there's one for the stroke color. This one's currently activated, which means it works slightly different than the deactivated one, but if you just click stroke, that'll become active. So you can click these to kind of choose which one's active or deactivated. There's a button up here to swap the colors, so you can say which one's fill, which one's stroke, and invert them. There's a button here to set it to none, or to remove the color. Okay, moving on. On this side, we have the history of swatches. So these are like the swatches that you've recently pulled from After Effects. They're all gonna be stored here, so you can just click them to set your fill or stroke to colors that you already have saved. Then this middle column, we have a button to apply these colors to your layer, one to read the fill and stroke from your layer into Swatcheroo, and then some options. Not only that, but we can actually make this panel in portrait mode if you prefer the layout looking like this. Okay, now that we've looked at the interface, let's see how we can actually use Swatcheroo to apply these colors to our layers. In this scene, I just have a bunch of different shape layers set up, each with a fill and a stroke. And just to show that off, we're going to come in here, super straightforward. Now, there's a few ways to do this, so we're going to walk through them one by one. First way is with this button here for Apply. And what this is going to do is look at the activated swatch, either the fill or the stroke, and apply that one to the layer. To make this a bit easier to see, I'm going to disable mask and path visibility just so we can you know, see what's going on. Now, if I just click this button, it's going to take the fill color and apply it to the fill of the layer. Alternatively, if the stroke was the active color and I hit apply activated color, it's going to apply the stroke to the layer. Super straightforward. What we could do though, if we want to apply both, is we can select our layer, choose the A, and if we hold shift while clicking this button, it's going to apply both the fill and the stroke. And the little tooltip is going to tell us that much. Okay, easy peasy. Now, that's just the first way. Another way to go about doing this is by having something selected, and when you click on your activated swatch, it's gonna pull up the Adobe color picker that we're all used to. From here, we can choose a new color, say, let's go back to that kind of grayish pale and hit okay, and it's gonna apply that color to the fill. It's kind of a super quick, easy way to change what you're working on in here and have it applied to the layer. The third way is to apply it from the history. In the history swatches, if you hold shift and click one of these, it's going to apply that to the active swatch and your layer immediately. Great. Straightforward. Ugly, but straightforward. Let's move on. Okay, we just saw that we can choose the color to apply to our layer by clicking on one of the swatches, picking a color from the interface, and then hitting apply. Well, what if we already have the color we want in our scene? That's where the second button comes in, read. What this will do is look at whatever you have selected, find the first fill and stroke it can, and then bring that into the panel. So let's take a look. I'll click the S, just turn off those handles, and hit read. Now, we can see that the fill color matches what's on our layer, and so does the stroke. But not only that, it's actually added these two colors to the swatch history panel. This means that we can now go to any other layer in our comp or in anywhere else in the project, and apply these colors right from the history panel, even if we've cleared them from this sort of direct access area. So that's pretty nifty. Now, if our layer didn't have a fill or it didn't have a stroke, so in this case, I'm just gonna delete the fill from the W and we hit read, what it's gonna do is bring this in as if there were no color. So here there's like a, a no fill or there's just, you know, there's only a stroke. So it's sort of reflecting that in the interface as well. Which means now that we have this sort of look with no fill and a green stroke, we can come to our other layers and holding shift, if we hit apply, it's gonna apply that same look to the rest of them. Okay, let's move on. So now that we know how to read and apply colors, we can actually use this with another feature in Swatcheroo. 
that will find matching colors and then select them for you. Here, we've got this sort of purpley color on these four letters here. And let's say that that purpley blue, we want to switch to something else. So how would you do this? You'd probably go into each of these four layers, select them all, and okay, from here you can come up here and change the fill. But if the fills are nested in a bunch of shape groups, that's not really going to work. And then what if you wanted them to be the specific color of like this A? Well, you probably come down here, twirl it open, copy the fill color, paste it. I don't know, it's just kind of annoying. So what I'm going to do is select the W and hit read to get that little blue value in here. And then with nothing selected, because I want to look at the whole comp, if I hold Alt or Option and press that swatch, it's going to go and find all of the instances where this blue exists as a fill in my scene. Now I can click here and you know change the color to something else and it's going to update it all of the spots all at once. Okay, moving on, there's this little button here called swap and this will swap the fill and stroke colors in the panel. Okay, that's pretty neat, but maybe not the most useful. Where this is useful is if you have things selected, say we select that E and this T and now we hit swap it's going to look at their fill and stroke and swap them with each other. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but super handy. So moving on, the next thing to look at is this remove button or the set to none. With nothing selected or nothing going on in our scene, clicking this will just tell Swatcheroo that the fill should be none and in this case the stroke black. So if we selected layers and hit apply, they'd apply as a black stroke with no fill. Okay, I get it. But where this really comes in handy is if we want to remove the fill of layers already in the project. What we can do is select our layers and press that button and it's just going to go ahead and remove the fill color from all of these. Now it doesn't actually delete it. If we look at the layers, that fill is still there, it's just hidden. Now I know you can say that you can do this natively up here. The problem is you've got to like have your thing selected, go to fill and press that and just like three steps versus with Swatcheroo, it's a one-step process. I find that much simpler. Okay, so as we saw, this little swatch history area is going to show you the past few colors you've read into Swatcheroo from your layers. And if you don't like seeing this, you can either go into the options and disable it, or just change the interface so that it's hiding, which doesn't really do the same job, but hey, at least it's not there. So. As we mentioned, to change these colors, you can choose your layer in After Effects, press Read, and it's now going to add that stroke and fill color to the history. Once it's there, you can go to another layer, say here, and press Apply to apply it right from here, or straight from the history, if you hold Shift, you can click these little buttons in the history, and it's going to apply these colors as the active swatch. So in this case, it's applying as fill, but we can go to stroke and it'll do the same thing. Okay, cool. Now, what happens if you don't want these colors to go away? Because every time we come into a layer and hit read, it's gonna push our swatches further down. It only holds six things. But the problem is if you wanna like keep these around so that you can keep using them in your layer, you want a way to sort of lock these. To achieve that, you can hold alt or option and click on little swatches in the history panel and it adds this little white stroke around them. This white stroke indicates that it's locked. That is, if we went into a layer and hit read again, it's not gonna move these. These are locked swatches. So let's say this layer is, I don't know, red and white. Well, I've set those colors and it's added those two colors to the history but our four swatches that were locked, they're staying locked. And then from here, we can either click them to apply them right into the panel or hold shift to apply them right to the layer. Neat. Now, the one little workflow hiccup with this is that in order to get swatches that you want locked, first, you have to set them here manually or read them and then lock them. Well, sort of as a quick handy shortcut, you can actually set and lock these colors directly all in one. By holding command on a Mac or control on a PC and clicking one of these swatches, you'll be prompted to choose the color for it, which will then set and lock directly without affecting the filler stroke colors. 
This is really good if you're like eyedropping or picking from your client or brand swatch colors to load them into Swatcheroo, just so you can use them throughout your project. So not only does Swatcheroo work on shape layers, but it'll also work on text and footage layers too. So here, we can read or set the stroke or fill color of our text layers. In this case, I'm gonna hit read, and it's pulled the fill and stroke from our normal text layer. No layer styles or anything for text, just the actual layer colors from the character pen. We can also swap, and that works, or remove fill, and that works, or swap here. Everything works exactly as you'd expect, just with text. Now, if you had a piece of footage, say a PSD layer, all of this will also work. However, it'll be using the layer styles because that's really the only way to make that work. So that's it for Swatcheroo. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to hear what you think. Bye.